Lee is going to kick it off for us with how to capture Teams call records using Microsoft Graph subscriptions. Lee, take it away. Thank you, David. I, I, I'm going to say three good presenters. I'll, I'll be I'll be kind. <laughs> uh, um, OK, let me just share my screen. Uh, OK, OK, so let me make that for you. OK, so uh, today I'm going to talk about building Teams uh, call logger using graph subscriptions. Um, so let's get into it. We don't have too much time. Uh, a bit about myself. I'm from the UK. Um, I work for a company called Simity. And I pretty much work in the M365 dev space on a daily basis. Uh, you can catch me on uh, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Um, obviously, I submit all my code to uh, to GitHub, and, and obviously, um, uh, you can you can sort of read uh, all my articles on on my blog. So um, the agenda is really to go through. I'm just going to quickly go through what a graph subscription is, in case you're unfamiliar. Uh, I'm going to go why uh, sort of why and how you would use it with a Teams call record. Um, and then we'll go through a demo um, and hopefully it all works. Um, so um, graph subscription, um, it's a way to subscribe uh, to, uh, to a resource. Um, so in this scenario, the resource is um, a call record. So effectively every time a re uh, resource is updated or created or deleted, uh, we are subscribing for that change. Um, and by subscribing, it means we're not having to like effectively poll for changes or scrape for changes uh, to see has anything changed in the last 10 seconds has anything changed in the last 10 seconds it's more you tell us when something's changed um which is obviously a much better way of uh, of approaching the the scenario so um how do you set up a graph subscription we're just going to quickly go over the, the steps hopefully it'll uh, help the, the code uh talk a bit better uh to you so first thing is um, you need to create a subscription so you need to provide um, some parameters. So the first one is the expiry date, then the type of resource. So in this case, call records. Um, you then need to say, what type of change am I looking for? Is it just when it's created or when it's updated or deleted or whatever? Um, that is um, sort of the, the, the next parameter. And then finally, the endpoint. So you're telling Graph, OK, I want to have call records when, they're, when they've been created and let me know for the next two days or something. Um, obviously, when Graph receives that uh, subscription needs to know when to where to send the data to so to to notify us that something has been created or, or whatnot so um, once we've set up that uh, subscription request um, it will then send um, a, a, a fake notification or pseudo notification to your notification endpoint to validate to prove that you know you are listening you are running on that um, on that uh, endpoint that you've specified in the request um, and then once that's validated, you just receive notifications until it expires. Um, typically, it's you, you don't want it too long. You don't want to open for you know, days on end. It's more you know 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that. And then the idea is that you will effectively renew that subscription before the current one expires, um, uh, sort of in perpetuity. So um, this is a sample uh, request. Um, so in this case, I've said um, here's here's a subscription. Um, I want the change type, so only when it's created, I don't worry about it being updated or deleted or whatever. Um, the, the, the resource in here, I've done it as a parameter, so obviously we can change the resource type depending on what type of subscription it is. Um, and likewise with the notification URL, um, it's just um, effectively my host name of my, you know, wherever the code's running, um, and then forward slash API for subscription notification. You can change that to whatever you want it to be, but that's what I'm using in this sample anyway. So um, why quick why why do you need to store call records? They're already in graph, they're already in admin center and whatnot. And, and that's a great question. Um, so up until very recently, there was no way to list call records. So if you know programmatically, if I wanted to go, oh, let's go get Lee's uh, meeting call record from last week, there's no way to do that. Uh, now I think I think it's in beta, um, you can you can pull those through, um, but you are limited to obviously what call records are currently in. Uh, Microsoft Graph and, and by extension Microsoft Teams. So you know if you want to keep you know seven years worth of records, um, you can't do that. You you, you have to obviously um, be holding to what what Microsoft is holding. So if you go oh we need to keep for legal purposes um, you know seven years of, of data or something, then the only real option is for you to grab that data out uh, via something like a subscription like we're doing here, storing it externally to. Uh, Microsoft, and then you can obviously use it for however, however long you need. Um, so, solution overview uh, of what I've 
what I've got here is uh, we've got teams on the left. So when people are making calls and joining meetings, they're not completely unaware of what's happening here. Um, ultimately, a call record gets created. Um, obviously, that is then uh, accessed through uh, Graph. And then effectively, we're having a conversation between Graph and uh, in this case, I've got it running in a function app. Um, and so any notifications, any uh, setting up of subscriptions, all that is done between Graph and Azure Function App. And then just for, because it's I can store the data in JSON, I'm putting it in Cosmos DB. I could put it in something else if I wanted to, but just for simplicity, I'm putting it there um, as obviously the payload from, from Graph um, will be um, in the format that um, I can just dump it into Cosmos DB. Um, so the, I kind of achieved this through two functions. We've got something called a subscription manager, name I've just come up with, where we're just constantly maintaining that a subscription is active at all times. So like I say, we don't, an expiry date, obviously is gonna expire at some point. So the idea is that we are effectively looking to see if there's an existing subscription. If there is, we don't have to create a new one. If, there, if there's no subscriptions, i.e. one's lapsed, then we will then create a new one. And, and that way we're kind of always, um, always, um, having a subscription ready to receive notifications. And then simply the, the other one, the subscription notification, is where we are uh, receiving any uh, data um, on, that, um, on that function and then storing it into, into Cosmos. So demo time. Um, let me just bring up my browser and hopefully it's here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate. I say simulate because I can't graph subscriptions aren't that fast so it might not actually come through in the time we have for this demo but um, I'm going to simulate effectively a call being made um, so in this case I'm just going to call um, just a dummy user that goes to voicemail still it's technically a valid call um, so I'm just going to initiate that now um, okay so if I end that call okay so that call now in a few minutes probably won't be in time for the end of the demo that call then um, come through into uh, into um, uh, as through as a subscription um, notification, and then we can then process it. So, um, in the fullness of time, it will come through. But obviously, we don't have that much time. So, um, I'll just quickly go through some samples, uh, and then what I can do is I can replay one of these previous calls that I did sort of 18 minutes ago, just to show you how it how it kind of works its way through the system. But effectively, the uh, notification has like I say, handles two things. The first part is a validation. So when we create a new subscription, we have to um, validate that subscription to say, yep, no, we are listening. Like we told you we're going to be here, we're here. Here's the response. So in this case, as soon as we set up a subscription, we get a, a request from the um, from from uh, from uh, Graph, and then obviously we respond to it. Um, and here's an actual uh, notification from Graph. So in this case, we're, we're listening on a call record type. Um, and obviously, we are then given the ID of the call record. Um, and what we can then do with that ID is then subsequently go get the, the full data, because um, the notification never includes the whole, all the data, because that could be quite heavy. The idea is that you effectively store the, the ID, and then you can go get the data at your, at your leisure. So you don't necessarily have to do it immediately after the notification. You don't have to necessarily. Uh, handle it all in one go. Um, so what I can do is I can just replay that same um, data. It will just, it's just gone through the system now. Um, so if I just bring up VS Code, just zoom in a little bit, um, you can see this notification has just come through here. So that's the same ID that was on the um, on the on the NGROC tunnel. Um, so effectively, the call uh, comes in. It, it Gets no, we, so we get a notification runs. We then process that notification and put it in a in a database. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go back to the browser um, and just show um, how that sort of data lands. So to kind of rather than just showing you it in Cosmos DB, which isn't that exciting, um, I've created a uh, a mirror in uh, Microsoft Fabric that mirrors the um, Cosmos database. Um, so this allows me to then um, kind of effectively uh, have the data stored in Cosmos, but then mirrored across into Fabric, and then I can then use Power BI reports and whatnot to uh, to, to to visualize it. So um, so if I refresh this, that last call that started DFF, um, that's come through here. 
and obviously now we've got all the information from from Microsoft Graph. And then finally, if I show you the Power BI um, part, um, just bring this up here. Just got a report that comes through at, hopefully it comes through anyway. Um, and this will just show you the data. Come on, Microsoft. Fabric, there we go. Okay, cool. So yeah, those are the calls through. Um, they're not particularly nicely formatted, but obviously this is just the raw data that's come through. You can see visually that um, that data has come through from, uh, from Cosmos. Now, code-wise, it's pretty straightforward, hopefully, to follow. Um, we, like I say, we have two functions, um, and I'll just quickly go through them um, and sort of point out the key points to really uh, focus on. So um, we have something called a subscription manager. So this is running on a cron job. So every five minutes, I run this bit of code effectively. Uh, and this code says, right, go get the subscriptions. So I have a, have a method to get subscriptions. So I'll go list what, all the subscriptions on the um, in, in graph that are currently live. Um, and then I then filter on, right, I'm looking for a subscription that's on, um, you know, the, um, the, 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 the call records resource. So if it equals, if I have at least one that equals the 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 call communications call records resource, then I'm good. Don't need another subscription. Otherwise, I do I go and create a subscription. Um, and in that case, I effectively pass through how many days I want the subscription for, what resource I'm setting the subscription up for. So in this case, call records. Um, and then this is the bit of uh, code that I had on the on the slide, where we're going and creating a, a subscription, um, and then. Once that's set up, we're then ready to handle subscriptions via notifications. So from a notification point of view, um, this function is a HTTP trigger, so it's not on a timer or anything. Um, and effectively, we have a very straightforward uh, uh, function going on here where we um, receive notifications um, from Microsoft Graph. Um, and then up here, we have um, where we're going to process the notifications. Um, and then effectively, on every um, record, we have to go and get the uh, the data from uh, from uh, Graph. Because like I say, the only the ID is sent to us, not all of the information, like you know, the call record itself. Um, so in that case, we have to um, go off and get the um, call records. Now, when you get a notification, um, it might include multiple IDs, it's not necessarily going to include one ID. It might be, oh, here's his 10 new call records. Um, so we have to sort of loop through them and go, oh, OK, here's number one, here's number two, here's number three. And we kind of do them in batches uh, within Graph. So um, in Graph, we're doing the batch request rather than doing 10 API calls to uh, Graph to get 10 call records. Let's just do it all in one go. Um, and then effectively, we're returning that data back. Um, and then in here, we have a, a Cosmos DB output binding that uh, that binds it all together and effectively puts when the function completes its run, puts it into Cosmos DB. Um, and that's about it from a demo perspective. I think I've got one more slide, so I'll just bring that back up. I can click on the present thing. Um, so I think I just quickly did a screenshot of this in case it didn't capture, but effectively what we have is we have the um, receiving notification from Graph. Um, we then uh, start an orchestrator, so we're using uh, durable functions, which is sort of allows you to run things you know, concurrently at scale. So if you know if it's a very busy tenant and you're getting you know call records almost every second, you can kind of scale it out to uh, to handle all the notifications. Um, and then we're storing this notification uh, information. And I think that is it. Um, last thing to say is thank you for listening. Um, I've got the code uh, on my GitHub. I think hopefully I'm going to put it somewhere, maybe in a PMP repo somewhere. Uh, not entirely sure where it fits yet, but um, I think that that's the plan anyway. So um, that's it for me. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff, Lee. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and uh, no link for that sample is in the chat. And Lee and I were talking yesterday about getting it into a PNP repo, so keep an eye out for that as well too. And then everybody can help contribute to it as well. So Lee, excellent job. Mm -hmm.